Hi guys, uh, Tony Bill McGrath here. I want to talk to you a bit about uh, how to choose a large knife for uh, outdoor camping and you know emergency survival use. Um, as you can see, I own a, a fairly decent number of uh, outdoor knives and gone through different uh, models and manufacturers uh, from the time I was a teenager in the Boy Scouts up till now. Um, you know, your, your tendency as an American male is try to get one tool that does everything because that's the, you know, the ultimate in coolness. But really, um, it's hard to do that. You're, the classic outdoor survival combination was really a, uh, an axe or a hatchet. Uh, in the old days, a small knife and, um, you know, a skinning knife or whatnot and a small pocket knife. Uh, modern bushcraft uh, camping use, they will include a folding saw on that. Um, I generally uh, carried a bunch of different folding saws, small hatchets, uh, sheath knives. Uh, a machete is a useful tool, uh, not only if you're in the jungle, but if you're looking to make a uh, camp mattress, getting some, uh, cutting some cane or... Um, cattails or whatnot to make a mat camping mattress or to uh, thatch a roof in a survival situation. Um, and a lot of the uh, Indian tribes where I live would make a uh, wigwam out of uh, uh, cattail rushes woven together in kind of a, a half circle, a beehive type shape. And um, so that's a good tool to have uh, even if you're not in the, uh, in the jungles cutting vines. But anyway, what I want to talk to you about is um, the, uh, the knives I finally come down to if you have to use one big knife. Uh, a, um, an axe is, is you know, definitely a better woodcutter. Um, you know, when I was in the Boy Scouts, you know, small hatchet like that, a little hardware store model was our uh, common hatchet. And I've gone up through the years. Um, you find that, um, you know, when you get up to a two-handed axe, and uh, this is a nice small two-handed axe from Cold Steel there, uh, that I actually like. It's inexpensive, 25 bucks, and um, it does the job pretty well. You have a good amount of leverage there. You have a heavy head compared to, say, that Wetterling there, which is an 18-inch handle. It's about as small as I can get two hands on but the larger one you can really do some good wood cutting with that but that's not something you're going to fit inside a, a day pack too easily it's going to have to be strapped to the outside you get some weird looks from people on the trail um, so there is a use for a buoy knife as a an all around tool that you have on you if you're out there day hiking or whatnot. Uh, you might have this in your pack uh, when you're on the trail or put it on your hip when you're uh, at camp. Um, now, how to choose a buoy knife or a camp knife? The, the ones I have here are two cold steel models. You'll see a Trail Master and the Recon Scout. And then the two camp knives are from the uh, now defunct uh, blackjack knives, a Moran and a uh, Kampa. And you, I like the idea of this size knife. It's it's versatile. If you just want something on your hip, if you don't want to carry a uh, a big backpack around, the for many years the cold steels were my favorite. Um, but I ran into problems. The cold steel tang is cut with a, uh, a water jet cutter from a different company and they'll go in and put the handles on a cold steel. And it's a very sharp corner, very much like this uh, Kukri blade blank you see here. So you see that corner there? It's very easy to get a stress fracture in there. And especially in cold weather, uh, or if that angle is very sharp, I've had cases where I've broken a, uh, a um, the cold steel a recon scout there, and I've heard of other people doing it with the uh, 
Trailmaster there, right at that juncture where the guard meets the tang. You know, batoning is a, a common uh, cause of that stress fracture, uh, batoning through wood. The, the two blackjack knives are a full tang, as you can see here, going all the way through, so they don't have that sharp demarcation right where the tang meets the blade. That company's out of business, so you can't go with those. So I found something recently that kind of meets the bill. Um, this is a Browning Barker. Uh, it's a good quarter in stock. And you notice it has a, a tapered tang. And what I like in that type of configuration, and you see the handle is also tapered, is it gives you good, a good amount of length so you can do cutting chores like you could with a short machete, cutting vines or uh, cattails or brush like that. has good reach, but it's not so heavy and clunky. You know, this, this camp knife from uh, Blackjack with that full stock almost to the edge doesn't start to taper until here. Uh, it's a good chopper for wood, but if you're trying to cut through light vines, you want velocity. You don't want weight, so that can get a bit heavy. So a tapered tang, like on this barker here from Browning, gives you a nice balance. You have enough reach like you would on a machete, a short machete, but your hand doesn't get fatigued from cutting through something light and not having that stopper of the uh, impacting the wood. The stock at the base here is a quarter inch thick, the same as my um, K-Bar BK2 here, which is an excellent, uh, basically a wedge with a handle on it for, uh, for splitting wood. Uh, and you could very easily get away with these two knives, the machete and the BK2, uh, and do a lot of work with those. Or, in my opinion, you could get a, uh, a camp knife with a tapered tang, thick stock in the back, you know, tapering right down to a point, you have nice balance because of that. The heaviest part of the blade stock is close to your hand, but you still have good reach. You don't have that fatigue cutting lightweight objects where you need velocity as you would with, um, you know, a, say a real Grande uh, camp knife. Um, so consider something like this when you look for a a camp knife, tapered tang and blade. Um, you notice there's no cross guard here. I'm not that big on cross guards. Um, for a, you now God forbid you were to have to get into a fight with one of these, that little bit of a cross guard is not going to really save you. It's not a, a, a D guard or even a, or a, a bell guard like you would on a full size sword. So, uh, I'd be more worried about balance and ease of use rather than having a guard on it. Um, I like my Carta handle slabs. The, if you're going to use these Craton handled blades from Cold Steel, make sure you wear some gloves or you're going to really abrade your hand after a bit of work. They are comfortable though, they absorb shock, but you wouldn't want to wear a leather glove. Um, so, if you do end up with just one blade on your person. Think about something with that distal taper. Thick going down to thin in the blade and thick going down to thin in the handle. And I think you'll find this to be a, a nicely balanced type of blade. Uh, Coles, uh, pardon me, Browning discontinued their Barker model at the end of 2009. You can still find a few of them on the net. I think they go for around 100 bucks. Uh, but if not, a lot of custom makers will do that type of work for you. All right. Thank you. Take care.